India's list of celebrities runs long. But rarely does one come across a celebrity like Dr. Monkambu Sambasivan Swami Nathan, who strives to feed millions of his countrymen and to make them self-sufficient in food grains. Known worldwide as the spirit behind India's green revolution, Dr. Swami Nathan's sole objective was to end the country's problem of recurrent famines. Well, I got. Um interest in agriculture partly my family has an agriculture background like all of our families at the same time when i was a student in the university college in trivandrum in 1940 to 44 i found that the newspapers are full of stories of the bengal famine where several million people died out of starvation and i decided that i must go to agriculture so I start and join the agricultural college at Coimbatore and then it was part of Madras University in 1944 from then onwards for the last over 52 years i have been only in agriculture famines were very frequent in india throughout the british rule in fact every few years the british government developed very seriously well planned famine codes because every 3 to 4 years in fact between 18 and 1870 to 1900 although population of india pakistan and bangladesh we were all part of the same british empire we were all together about 280 million even then famines claim nearly 30 million lives between 1870 to 1900 this is largely because our agriculture was very neglected it was entirely rain fed what we used to call a gamble in the monsoon unless rains come when the rains fail there was no method and also there was no research or technology development for food crops the colonial time attention was paid to plantation crops like tea or rubber or coffee but not to rice or to wheat or to jowar or bajra his contribution came as a miracle at the time when the entire world had written off india to come out of this miserable state of affairs i still recall in 1964 65 we had a very severe drought and the conditions were very poor particularly in bihar fortunately we had the imported wheat and so on which were distributed and our voluntary sector took care of relief at that time the bbc sent a television crew uh, to make a film called indian eyes on the future and uh, towards the very end they came to me after filming the drought in bihar and so on almost <laughs> it looked like a hopeless case and i said if everything goes well the wheat harvest of 1968 will make a new beginning in india's agricultural history by a combination of factors the political will and action administrative support extension action and farmers own hard work particularly the punjab farmers farming is in the blood for the sikh farmers i would say they are the heroes of the whole revolution they started this movement with great deal of vigor the farmers because you and i can only advise the farmers help them develop some technologies but the people who who work toil sun and in sun and rain day and night are the farm women and farm men they are the people who produce the food we are only supporting them to produce more while the lush green fields enthused the farmers the government opened all avenues of support after independence the government of india gave very high priority to irrigation that was a very major investment we have made in our country so that we are now become one of the largest irrigated areas in the world secondly there was the emphasis on technology development for food crops the indian council of agricultural research the agricultural universities and others now we decided that if we want to improve production of a country we must have varieties of crops food crops like wheat or rice jowar which can respond better to soil fertility and irrigation water because water together with nutrients and good management and that and the farmers do the rest of it farmers are farmers are very hard working and once they had the right technology and the right services like seeds for example there is no use in saying you grow a new variety if the seeds are not available so seed production distribution of inputs and above all assured and remunerative marketing that is very important for farmers without purchases just as fertilizer helps the plant assured marketing is the fertilizer to the farmers and when all the three packages of technology packages of uh, services and package of public policies 
were all like a symphony orchestra. They all married with each other. Then you find the production went up very fast. To educate the illiterate farmers with the latest technological know-how, Dr. Swaminathan mooted the idea of setting up Krishi Vigyan Kendras all over the country. These Kendras are in great demand today and plans are afoot to take them to every district of the country. We started the Krishi Vigyan Kendra uh, because we wanted to upgrade the technical skills of those who have not had the opportunity of formal education. This is what I called in 1972 as techni or getting, imparting the latest technical skills on the basis of learning by doing, by work experience. For example, an Adivasi woman can make a fish uh, a seed by extracting the pituitary glands, injecting them. They are very good uh, with their skills. Therefore, there is no relationship between the ability to learn new skills. This is the purpose for which Krishi Vigyan Kendras were established. To establish regular communication with the farmers in order to tell them about the latest agriculture related information. Dr. Swaminathan suggested that the government starts the now famous Krishi Darshan program. Once the late Dr. Vikram Sarabhai and I went to Srimadhi Indira Gandhi soon after she became Prime Minister and told her there is so much knowledge in the laboratory we should take it out to the field. She said what is coming in the way? We said we must ask the Information and Broadcasting Ministry to give a slot of time in Doordarshan. She said immediately she said you go ahead and that is how the Krishi Darshan program which she inaugurated on January 26th of our independent day in 1967 thanks to the Doordarshan people. This was the time when Dr. Swaminathan held the position of Director General in the Indian Council of Agricultural Research. Soon he rose to become the Secretary Agriculture followed by the Acting Deputy Chairmanship of the Planning Commission. And now, Director, Center for Research on Sustainable Agricultural and Research Development. Our major aim is to integrate the principles of environmental sustainability and social equity into all aspects of technology development and dissemination. He also takes active interest in many other areas. Little wonder then, he had very little time for home and a family. He has always been a workaholic, right from the day one, and spent most of his time on his work. Earlier years, he used to spend a lot of time in the field and in the laboratory and come home very late. And then later on, as the nature of his work changed, he began to travel a lot and he used to spend a lot of time away. So the type of support needed also varied a lot and uh, since I had my own work always it was certainly very strenuous especially when the uh, children were young. This selfless labor for the country got uh, Dr. Swaminathan many awards. He still has a few regrets left, the major one being the educated youth's disinclination to opt for farming. Most of the students who are joining agricultural or veterinary universities are from urban areas, urban areas, so that you find the number of students after graduation going back to farming, they are very few They don't have either the interest or the self-confidence to take to farming as a career. Despite all this, Dr. Swaminathan remains a true Indian at heart. Dreams and visions of such men and women make the country look forward to a bright future. I am happy I was born in India. I am happy I am living here. I would always like to live only in this country because the challenges are here, the opportunities are here, the nature is so beautiful here. We, are, we have been gifted with God, the wide variety of plants, animals, beautiful scenery. And there are great opportunities to make it a great country. There are millions of children, women and men go to bed hungry every evening. I think unless we attack this problem and make India hunger free, I will continue to dream for a day when we have a hunger free India.